Good afternoon. Welcome to Carrow Road. Welcome to the championship run-in. Eight games for Norwich City to get themselves into the top six. And it all starts here today against uh, promotion-chasing Sheffield United, who have their uh, aspirations raised a little bit higher. I think that is fair to say. Uh, not according to me, it isn't. Um, soon, soon, there you go. Uh, yeah, Paddy's getting a uh, So you can tell we're a bit rusty and haven't done it for a few weeks. <laughs> but we'll, we'll bring you the team news in a minute or so. Going to be interesting to see... Uh, just how many changes there are from that, uh, if any, of course, from that uh, draw against Stoke before the break. Norwich City, of course, looking for a response after what was a pretty disappointing week prior to that uh, pause for international action. Some of the, the Norwich City players who went away with their countries had really productive spells. Obviously, the, uh, the, the Scottish lads, probably the best example of that, beating Spain, uh, and they won their first game as well, which was Cyprus. Cyprus. There you go. That's good job you're all here um, because I didn't follow any of it. So there we go. Um, and it should hopefully be dropping imminently and then we'll be able to bring it here. And here it is. So this is how Norwich City line up. Angus Gunn in goal, Max Aarons, Grant Hanley, Ben Gibson and uh, Dimi Yanoulis as the back four. McLean and Sarah as a midfield two. Looks like Marquinhos and Ida as wide options with Sargent and Puki up front. So a return to that almost 4-2-3-1 uh, that we kind of saw in David Wagner's early weeks in charge. The subs bench, Tim Krull, Andrew Mavadeli, Sam McCallum, Christos Scholles, uh, Jakob Sorensen, Liam Gibbs and Abu Kamara. Paddy, I, I guess the headline there, Adam Eder, straight back from injury, straight back into the starting 11. Well, I mean, for me, he, would, he was good to play because um, fitness was the only issue. I, I thought I thought he was bright at Millwall when he played. He was bright at Huddersfield and you know, that burst down the left brought the goal for Zara, if we remember that night. Then he got the injury, um, didn't see him for the rest of that game, or Stoke. But um, for the fact that he was able to declare himself fit for the Republic, and I think he got 20 minutes Thanks, in the um, in the French game, didn't he, on last Monday night. Once I saw him playing there, I thought he was nailed on, because I think Wagner likes what he can offer um, down that side. So, uh, yeah, that's good news. That's good news, because we'll go back to post-match Stoke, when I put it directly to David Wagner, he said it'd be a number of weeks. And I guess you can slice that any way that it has been a number of weeks. But the inference was it might be, you know, beyond Easter maybe. So the fact that Adam Eder's fit, available and straight into the 11, I think that's good. Not surprised Sorensen dipped out. I didn't think that experiment worked playing him at right back at Stoke. So Aaron's back there. Although slightly, for me, disappointing that Zara's going to be operating in that more deep line role. Um, I just think he's better now further forward. I think he can affect the play better it, it, it nearer the goal, the opposition goal. And and ultimately, he's gone with Pukki again. I'm a little bit surprised. I thought he might go Sergeant and bench Pukki. But the fact that we're talking about Pukki, Sergeant, Ida, they need to come to the party today. Goals is what it's about now more than ever. And uh, they're, they're on a bit of a barren run as a collective, as individuals. Um, that's why I thought maybe Zara further forward would help to solve that equation because they'll need to today. They have to win this game today. So... Other than that, I think it pretty much picks itself. Maybe a shout for Obama Daly instead of Gibson. But uh, it's much of a muchness there at the minute alongside Hanley. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say that's an eyebrow raiser. But for me, of that 11, I'll throw it back to you, Connor. I'd like to see Sarah further forward. And for me, it was possibly Sorensen in alongside McLean. But he's gone that route. And I guess he would argue in terms of attacking options where you've got Marquinhos, you've got Ida, you've got Sergeant and Pookie. That's a quartet that should be good enough to to threaten Sheffield United in their uh, defensive third today. What are your thoughts on the 11, Norm? Yes. Uh, well, my, my, my first one is that there's no Marcelino Nunez in the matchday squad, unless I'm mistaken, which is a, an interesting one. He wasn't uh, necessarily an injury issue that was flagged yesterday. I'm, I'm slightly surprised that it's a midfield two. Obviously, Sargent will, will play a little bit deeper than Puki. We all know that, but... Um, Norwich, of course, have played with a bit more of a conventional 4-2-3-1 in recent weeks. I'm a bit, a bit surprised he hasn't gone down that route today for, for Sheffield United, particularly given that they do play kind of those those three central midfielders, McAtee, Doyle and Sander Berg, all starting for them today. So that feels like they've got a little bit of a numerical advantage in there, which uh, does slightly concern me a little bit. Also slightly surprised, maybe surprised is the wrong word, but intrigued by Marquinhos's um, the fact that he's been he, he's starting Christos Solis of course started at Stoke I think there was probably too tight of a, a time frame between his uh, appeal getting overturned and that Stoke game in order for him to come back in so I guess it, 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 all of this I guess kind of shows the, the limited amount of options with Hernandez out Dowell out Rowe out in those in those wide areas 
Um, yeah, I mean, what do you make of Marquinhos' inclusion? It feels like he's still got a lot to prove at Norwich City, doesn't it? Well, I mean, I'll we'll just go back to his last game that he started, which was was the Huddersfield game that he, he got sent off in the, in the end. Uh, I agree with you entirely. I think that the lateness of that appeal, I think, he, I think the club only confirmed it on the Friday before Stoke. A lot of the work had have been done, I think, tactically and formation-wise. So that didn't surprise me. He didn't, he didn't start at Stoke. But he didn't grasp his opportunity for me. And he wasn't alone that night at Huddersfield. They, they, they let a golden chance slip there, particularly going 1-0 up and being so dominant in the first half. But within that, I don't think he, you know, I'll cast my mind back. I can't remember him affecting it, really. Um, certainly not as he did down here when he played against was it Cardiff when he got his goal and, and he was very good he was very bright that was his full full debut I think um, and you know you'd have thought he would have would have relished the opportunity to sort of really put a marker down at Huddersfield and it didn't happen so he's got another opportunity today I think it does underline the dearth of options he's got in those wide areas available options um, but you're always with him you go back to the fact that he's an Arsenal player and Arsenal clearly are a club on the rise They've seen something in him. They've gone and recruited him. Maybe not quite ready for the Gunners' first team, which is a hard nut to crack at the minute. But you'd think he would be able to drop down a level and come and really impact it at this level. He's certainly now had plenty of time to adapt to what David Wagner is demanding of him, working with these players as well. We know, obviously, he knew Zara very well, but there shouldn't be any lack of familiarity now with, with the group. And really, I'm running out of excuses as to why he's not really going to grab the opportunity today to, to really show what he's all about. And if it, the game passes him by again today, then you start to think that probably it's another one to file in the, in the Edwards and, and Patrick Roberts category, which would be sad because, you know, I think there was genuine excitement given his pedigree when he came in towards the end of January deadline. But so far, here against Cardiff aside, I don't think it's really worked out for him. But what an opportunity, um, you know, in a game that Norwich need to win and need to perform after the last three go and grab it and go and show us what a good player you are. So let's hope he, uh, he really steps up to the mark today because repeating what I said earlier on, you know, there's many things it feels wrong with this this group currently in terms of how they're going about it. You're talking about the shape and Sheffield United shape, but for me, the biggest issue is the lack of goals and, and they don't really look like scoring. And, you know, if that's individuals, if Do you see enough creativity in this team today. Well, it should be. I mean, Zara definitely fits that category. Um, but I guess we could link this back to Marquinhos, couldn't we? I mean, Marquinhos, if you, if you yeah. look at that front four, you're probably looking at him for creativity. There's a, there's a lot of pressure on his yeah. shoulders, I guess, in that regard. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think... I think Pookie is the type of player who needs specific service. I think we've seen that over the years. And I don't bracket either or Sargent necessarily as players who can make something happen. Certainly not if you draw a parallel with who increasingly feels like a big miss at the minute, which is Kieran Dow. You know, that intelligent midfield play, good on the ball... Um, sees the pictures around him, connects to those type of players. I think, for me, either Sarge or Pookie, they're all of a, of a muchness in terms of how you bracket them and what they can do in those areas of the pitch. They're almost, they need facilitators, and that's why I think Dowell is such a huge miss at the minute. And Marquinhos isn't really that type of player, not what we've seen so far, which is why, for me, with no Nunes, Zara fulfills that brief. But it may turn out that, you know, he does get the opportunity to break forward, but it just feels if you're, if you're deploying him alongside McLean, you're necessarily saying you want him in those areas of the pitch more deeper, but time will tell. But, um, yeah, I, I don't look at that four and feel necessarily there's a huge amount of creativity or ingenuity to, to maybe unpick what they're going to face with this well-drilled Sheffield United team, but time will tell. I mean, obviously you get, your mind wanders to, to Bramall Lane and they were, were they tuning up that day? And, yeah. At the game plan, no different manager, of course, but Pookie scored that day, and, and but for that missed penalty, of course, they win the game, and who knows how the season may have panned out for that group and Dean Smith actually from that point. But you know, there was more, there was more than enough in the way that game unfolded to feel that Norwich had enough about them to, to get something. And I, I still feel like today it's just for me, Zara is better now, palpably better operating further forward. We saw at Millwall, which as it feels now, is the highest watermark of the Wagner regime. When you had Sorensen in there alongside McLean, that released him to, to do the damage that he did, higher up the pitch that day. And since then, I, I don't feel he's been given the opportunity to repeat that because he's been asked to do a job slightly deeper. So for me, it's all about unlocking the potential in Gabby Zara, the attacking potential. And um, time will tell, as I say, whether we get to see that today. But uh, yeah, for me... I think it felt like Pookie out because he's not shown enough 
in recent performances and, and one of Sargent or either leading the line. But Wagner knows better. He sees these players day in, day out. He feels that this is the best 11 to get, to get the result today. We'll see, won't we? Yes, just to bring you the, uh, the Sheffield United team. Here's how they line up. They've got Fodderingham in goal. Uh, Admet, Ad, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm bad enough to say normally, let alone recalled. Ahmed Hozic, uh, Egan and Robinson as their back three, which again does construct an argument as to why Norwich City might want to play a front two against that back three. Um, and, and also the, the two in wide areas could get some joy. Bulldog at right wing back, uh, Max Lowe at left wing back. McAtee and Doyle, obviously the Manchester uh, City lone pair. Sanderberg as well, who's a £30 million player once upon a time with uh, Ilya, Ilya and, and Dai, who's been almost the breakout star of this championship campaign alongside Ollie McBurney, who will be a name familiar to everyone and someone that Daniel Farker rated very highly uh, during his time at Carrow Road. I mean, this is... All, look, the eight games that Norwich City have left, all of them are, are big in their own uh, in their own merit. Today, today feels really important in terms of narrative. Maybe is, is the way to construct it because after what was a really disappointing week before that international break, some wind was let out of Norwich City sails. Which at that point, there was plenty of momentum and positivity, and almost an expectation that they would reach the top six. Maybe I don't think that's unfair to say. Um, certainly from from some supporters, not all of them. That has obviously drifted a little bit after after the defeat to Sunderland and draws against Huddersfield and Stoke. I mean, this would be a, a really important win just for, for the feeling, wouldn't it, if they could do something here today, albeit against a side who obviously are chasing automatic promotion. Oh, I mean, it's, it is. You, know, you don't want to overstate it, but given it is Sheffield United, given Norwich coming off the back of three very unconvincing performances and two points from nine, nowhere near good enough in terms of harnessing momentum at this stage, particularly as they're playing catch-up anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, it could it, it could be it could feel Millwall esque again in terms of raising the horizons and, and feeling that as Wagner maintains as he did again yesterday as he did after Stoke that part what's gone before part this club stated objective of automatic promotion at the start of the season that's gone, but you can still get to the end destination albeit through a more circuitous route. It's there for them, you know. I mean, Luton. I don't know if they've held on, but they were one nil up, weren't they, against Watford? Before we started to record. Adam's going to check for us. Yeah, I mean, that, it feels like they're over the horizon, as are Sheffield United, as are Middlesbrough. And it, with each passing game now, it feels like, that, you know, it's maybe only fifth or sixth that Norwich can target. Yeah. Yeah, so, still, still yeah, one nil. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, with only eight games left, seven after today, you know, anything other than a, a win for me is, you know, nudging it firmly in the direction of it's not going to happen now. And, and you know, we, we might many of us might feel that's already the case but and while it's still possible while it's still points to play for you know you're three points outside the top six conceivably results could go for them today and they could be inside the top six that's how tight the margins are but as I said to Wagner yesterday you know for me it's not the not the next eight it's the next four it's these it's Middlesbrough it's Blackburn and Rotherham as well by the end of that four game swing I think we'll know definitively if Norwich are in with a shout or whether it's uh Get the rebuild, get the uh, get the abacus out, and try and find some money down the sofa because there's going to be a big summer ahead of him. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I'm uh, I'm going to mix it up a bit just because obviously in the last week we've had some uh, uh, not the, not the results that anyone would like. So I'm going to go first and uh, and say what I feel might happen here today. Which that's ambitious. I, I, well, it is, it is. But but also I'm hoping that you'll finish it on a bit more of a positive note because I and I said this to you beforehand that I I I'm really struggling to navigate a, a Norwich City win here this afternoon. Uh, I just think. Sheffield United are, are, are efficient, are going for automatic promotion. You tend to find teams in that race. Norwich have been there plenty of times and therefore will be able to relate with, to a lot to, uh, of this. Tend to be able to grind out results. And I know there's obviously a lot of conversation about the FA Cup and uh, and, and obviously they've got Middlesbrough in their, in their rearview mirror coming up uh, absolutely steaming behind them. Uh, they've got a three-point cushion in the game in hand as well. Uh I think they're going to win here today. So I'm, I'm going to go for a 2 0 Sheffield United. Bad. Well, I mean, as you say, you look, I mean, we're t- I mean, I, I, I feel like I've gone on a bit of a theme here about Norwich's lack of cutting edge. And you contrast that with Sheffield United, particularly in Dai, who is an excellent player at this level. I mean, Bernie's such a nuisance. You know, he will really make life uncomfortable for Hanley and, uh, and Gibson. So, yeah, I mean, it's hard to, to argue with that assessment. But, um, you know, last three games, I've sort of went on this vibe that I'll, I'll just forecast a Norwich defeat and it hasn't had the desired effect. So I'm going to return to actually trying to predict what I think might happen rather than what I'd hope would happen. I, I, I can see Norwich getting a draw here today, actually. I think they will 
Is that is that good for is that good for them? Is that good for? Well, you again, it's probably a holding pattern. No, no, not really. I don't think you know. As you say, Middlesbrough are really breathing down Sheffield United's neck in, in the race for automatic and with loot and winning. And it obviously, depends on how maybe Millwall and, and one or two teams Coventry around them go today. But it would feel like lost ground if Norwich only walk off the park here today with with a point. But it would keep, keep things alive and depending on how they perform, there may be positives to, you know, that, that can be extracted from that. But, um, you know, ultimately, I think it does feel like it needs a win for me, just to lift it again, because it, the last three games have been so flat, really. Um, opportunities lost in all three games. But for Angus Gunn, they lose that Stoke game. So, you know, if it's going to happen, it has to happen for me today. And, um, you know, Wagner was saying all the right things yesterday, but we're ultimately in the hands now of those players and they haven't produced over the entirety of the season, really. Certainly in the last three games, they need to produce today because I don't think they're coming up against the team who will, who will give them anything. You know, this is a battle-hardened United team. They have lost two of the last four in the league. I will stress that. But, you know, I think the fact that Middlesbrough have really upped the ante, they're not going to come here and, and, and think a point's good enough. I think Hecking Bottom will set them up to try and get the, the win. That might play into Norwich's hands. There might be opportunities to exploit but, uh, yeah, I'm going to sit on a fence and draw. Well, what's so funny? Just the lights coming on then. It's, yeah. it's like the lights from beyond. Uh, I'm going to read you some of the, the key fixtures in and around Norwich, uh, which is just on Adam's laptop. Which is why I'm looking, veering over here. Uh, Blackburn Rovers are away to Birmingham this afternoon. Uh, Coventry are at home to Stoke, which could potentially be a, a, a little bit of a tough one with Alex Neal going there. Uh, and that was the one I was going to come to. West Brom Millwall, which is a, a massive game, but also next weekend, uh, on the next Friday, sorry, because the Easter fixtures, Millwall play Luton. So they've got a really interesting two weeks. So that sort of does present an opportunity for Norwich City, albeit their, uh, their fixtures are pretty tough as well. So let's see what we get here today. Paddy, thank you. Thank you all very much for watching. Of course, you can follow our coverage across our channels and on the Pink Plus app as well. You can have a, a free month's trial to that. And, uh, and see if you like it and come and join me on the match day vlog uh, throughout this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. And we'll see you again very, very soon.